What's going on guys, we're back with another video from my guy, Walter's World. This one is Ireland, the don'ts of visiting Ireland. So we got a 14 long video here, minute long video here. It should be very impressive. Obviously guys, living in Ireland for whole life, I'll throw some points in here as well, what not to do in Ireland, the, the, you know, the things to look out for in our beautiful little small country. Oh, one of them just came to the top of my head. Don't talk about leprechauns, guys, very sensitive subject here. Obviously, and uh, also don't talk about, let me see, a uh, pot of golds at the end of the rainbow, guys. We don't have that sort of stuff here. That's all mythology. You know, obviously, a lot of people like to talk about that kind of thing. That's actually not real, guys. I know a lot of short guys in Ireland, really short, five foot tall guys, but leprechauns sadly aren't real. But this one should be impressive, guys. Make sure to drop a comment. Go over to Walter's World, spelled W-O-L-T-E-R-S, World. And yeah, check him out, guys. Let's get it. Hey there fellow travelers, Mark here with Walters World and today we're in Dublin, Ireland. We've got St. Patrick's Cathedral behind us and today what we have for you are the don'ts of visiting Ireland. And even though I'm here in Dublin for this video, the first don't I have for you is don't think Ireland equals Dublin. Look, Ireland is an entire country and it is gorgeous from the cliffs of Moher and Galway in the west, you go down to the south. That's pronounced Galway, not Galway, but you know, he's from the US, so we'll accept it guys, we like it, let's keep it going. You see Kinsale and Waterford, there is so much beauty in this country and a lot of people only see Dublin. Now don't get me wrong, Dublin is a cool city, but there's so much more to see when you come here, going down to kiss the Blarney Stone and things like that are quintessential parts of visiting Ireland for a tourist or for locals as well. It's a fun thing to do, but do not think that Dublin equals Ireland. And that's why I'm going to say another don't for you is don't get freaked out with the prices in Dublin because the prices outside of Dublin are a light more affordable okay so well I'd have to put that into I'd have to put some you know push back on that recently guys Dublin is very expensive of course the most expensive place like in Europe but outside of Dublin Galway Cork shit like that it's still very expensive guys expect to spend a lot of money when you come here a lot of money so that's where I'm going to leave off with our Dublin stuff, all right? Now, my second don't for you is don't think that it rains all the time. I mean, look, I'm glistening. That's not rain, that's sweat because it's sunny and warm and nice here. Yes. That's true, guys. From the, num from the months of, I'd say, April, you know, March 17th, St. Patrick's Day, it's about April, all the way to November, it doesn't rain as much as during the, the winter. During the winter, it rains pretty much every day, though. I will say that. It rains a lot. It is sunny in Ireland sometimes. <laughs> so don't think when you're going to come here, oh, my vacation is going to get ruined because it's going to rain all the time. That is not the case. Now, I won't say it doesn't rain. It does rain a lot here, all right? But just know that it's not always raining in Ireland, so relax on that. But with the weather stuff, I do recommend wearing layers. I mean, I've got two t-shirts and a sweatshirt on because I know now I'm sweating a little bit, so I might take this off. But I know in an hour or two, it might cool down. And yes, it might rain. And so I guess- Oh yeah, that's the thing. Like when I went to Canada, they had no switches, like on off switches for the lights and stuff. It was just always, you plug it in and it's just turned on all the time. That's pretty uneconomical, right? Another don't with the weather is when they do say it's gonna be a sunny day. Don't think that means it isn't going to rain, all right? So always either have a jumper with you or a jacket or an umbrella because it probably will rain. It doesn't rain all the time, but it might rain occasionally, okay? My next don't for you is don't think you're going to get out of Ireland without meeting some Irish people. Look, the people in Ireland are super friendly and they will come and talk to We are, guys. We I would say apart from other countries, maybe like the US, I was there a very, very friendly nation. I would say apart from America and Canada, Ireland is super hospitable. Sorry, guys, I'd say just the old lighting there. We want to talk to everybody here, guys. I feel like everybody here has the gift of the gab. We always want to talk to people that are foreign, you know, especially, you know, US and Canadians. But sometimes it's just a lot, guys. I feel like, I feel like you get to a point where you just like, you know, don't want to talk to anybody. That's just me anyway. But yeah, we love to talk to foreigners here, guys. To you. Even if you want to have some time alone, enjoying music and having a pint, they're going to say hi. They're going to come talk to you. They're going to give you tips and advice of where to go, where to eat, what sites to see, where to say all these things because the people here are fantastic. And that's one of the great things we are, we are. about Ireland are the Irish people from their sense of humor and their way to then make it a little bit of fun of you. You know, I can't tell how many times I've had, oh, I see you enjoyed our Irish stew quite a bit. I'm like, yes, 
Yes, I did, okay? Bro, this guy enjoyed a lot of Irish stews. And let me tell you something, guys. So do I. I love a beef stew. Oh, my God. And I guess that'll lead us into the next don't we have for you is don't think Irish food is bad. Or don't... Bro, Irish food is bad. I'm just going to put that out there, guys. It's pretty terrible. Apart from salmon. Okay, we have the best salmon ever. Well, that's kind of not really Irish. It's kind of like Norwegian. But the salmon we have here is phenomenal. The seafood chowders, guys, anywhere you go, get a seafood chowder every single day. They're just phenomenal. And the, the breakfast that we have here, the guys, the Irish breakfast, uh, we put chips on everything. So having chips and it's not that weird, but I probably wouldn't have chips on an Irish breakfast. So I would just have toast and shit like that. But obviously your man has chips on the Irish breakfast, which is kind of funny. But mushrooms, you know, you got the pudding, you got the, you got the eggs, you got the, 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 the uh, sausages you got the damn bacon oh so delicious guys so delicious the beans oh don't be surprised if you actually like the food here Love it. look the last 10 years have seen a revolution in ireland in terms of the food culture the food is fantastic there's great restaurants eating at the pubs all kinds of stuff is a fantastic thing to do and enjoy i mean think about this 10 20 years ago when you came to ireland that is a clam chowder guys get that it's delicious oh. it wasn't a culinary delight now it is so go and have the seafood chowder when you're by the sea or have the lamb or have some of the pies that are here your know, shepherd's pie or or fish pies oh my goodness the food's so good sausages a full irish breakfast oh, oh my goodness you will eat very well here like, so a lot of people say irish food isn't good yeah it's not really like um how to describe this well how to articulate myself well with this one like obviously like the irish food in pubs and stuff is class so like, you can get like Irish breakfast, seafood chowders. I just get chicken and chips, like uh, chicken goujons and chips. That's my favorite dish, guys. Chicken goujons and chips. Oh, that's some protein building food. But the food is amazing here. I don't know why people say it's really bad. You know, it is bad some places, but most of the restaurants, the famous restaurants that you get here, Keen's, you know, Porterhouse, stuff like that, the food is oh it's unbelievable guys so don't think it's not going to be a culinary treat here now my next don't for you is don't forget that they drive on the left and you have to look to the right look here in ireland they drive on the left so it's the opposite side of like germany or the u.s and for tourists you really need to rent a car when you're here to really go and explore the beautiful sites and castle ruins and neolithic ruins and things like that because public transport does go a lot of places but not here as well guys i'm actually a tour guide in ireland now uh officially from this year i did like 10 tours this year i love being a tour guide and i'll say to, to i always say to american and canadian guests of the of the country you know take your time touring the city or, or touring the country you know you can do the whole country in about two weeks that's being conservative guys you know if you're stopping off every few days but you can see a lot you can see the whole country in two weeks but take those two weeks, guys, and really run with it. If you want to do a really in-depth tour, take four weeks. But two weeks should be enough to see the whole of Ireland. It's beautiful. The countryside is beautiful. I love going to the Cliffs of Moher every year, Calamore Abbey every year, and, and bringing my guests on tours. I literally bring, literally, like I said, I'm a tour guide this year, and I love it, guys. You know, shout out to Firebird Tours. Amazing. Not all the time, so if you really want to see Ireland, you've got to rent a car. But don't forget, you got to drive on the left. Also, don't forget, when you're crossing the street, look right so you don't get smashed by the cars, okay? Because I have seen a few tours do the hoo -hoo -hoo, jump back because they thought they were going to get smashed, okay? Another don't I'll have it for you with the driving is don't think you're going to get an automatic car when you rent a car here. Most of the rental cars here are manual. If you want automatic, you are going to pay a huge upcharge for that. So just a heads up for that one, okay? Yeah, learn how to drive manual. You know, my girl is Canadian. She has to drive automatic. It just wrecks my head literally driving a, <laughs> drive a manual guys and also i guess i'd say my last don't for the driving is don't freak out while you drive okay because the roads can get pretty tiny and that can be a little scary when you got this hedgerow on the side and a semi coming on the right side of you and you're like i'm not used to this it's okay to slow down when you do drive here okay yeah most of the driving that you guys do in the west coast of ireland the wild atlantic way will be really tight driving you know i drove it i drove it so much this year touring guests around like i said and I never trip out, guys. And I never freak out because, you know, honestly, the worst comes to worst. You hit a wall. You hit the trees. It's never happened to me. Just drive slowly on the back roads. You know, don't be going like 180 kilometers on the feckin' main road because you will crash. And there's lots of buses that come as well. So take it, take it, take it easy, guys. Be conservative and look at your scenery. There's always going to be mountains. There's always going to be beautiful, scenic things outside. Take your time while driving. 
I was wrong. I did have another don't for you. Is don't get into an accident when you want to pull off to the side of the road to look at some of the sites because you'll be going on these windy roads and see a castle ruin here or a stately home or just beautiful vistas. So don't just pull off the road wide right away because I've seen people almost have accidents that way. So a lot of times when there's a beautiful view or something like that, there might be a pull off you can go into. So do the pull offs to take your pictures. Don't park in the road or park on the side because since the lanes are so small, that can be pretty dangerous. And I have. Let me tell you this, guys. If you come to Ireland, I wouldn't personally listen to Walter's advice on this. I love Walter. Just much love. I want to say that out there. If he watches this video, which I doubt he will, but I'll say this, guys. Do not rely on buses. If you're going to stay in Dublin, uh, yeah, okay, rely on buses. But if you want to travel Ireland, do not use a bus, guys. Get in a car. Now, obviously, if you want to, you know, take a tour from Dublin to Galway, to Dublin to Clare, to see the Cliffs of Moher, Dublin to Galway, do that, guys, for the day or two trip. But when it comes to traveling around Ireland, just take a, just take a car, guys. It's like 300 euro for the whole, you know, two or three weeks, so. I've seen a lot of tourists doing that, so I thought it'd be a good idea to mention it. And when you go to those medieval castles, you know, if you're going to go to the Rock of Cashel or, or Blarney Castle or something like that, another don't I have for you is don't mess around on the steps. Look, the medieval staircases, these circular staircases, they're small, steep steps, so claustrophobia might be a thing, but also slipping and falling. So This guy is giving a really good in-depth about touring Ireland. I'm not going to lie, guys. This is amazing. This is like everything you need to know. So good job to Walter. This is really good, guys. This is really good. Don't mess around when you're on those because I have seen some people fall down a few steps and get hurt kind of bad. So I don't want that to happen to anybody. So do pay attention. And if you're going to be going with your kids to these sites, realize if you're going to go to the Blarney Stone or something like that, they, or you're going to go to Kilkenny and you want to go up the, the Round Tower, sometimes there are height restrictions for people that can go in to see these things because you don't want the kid to actually slip and phew, fall off the top of Blarney Castle, okay? Another don't I'm going to follow on with that since I'm talking about kids is don't think you can have your kids in the pub after nine o'clock. Now sometimes you can get away with it but most pubs will say you know, they'll be really kind of look it's nine o'clock the kids have to go. And the thing is you might want to stay longer because there's live music and food and drinking and stuff like that and some places are very strict with the 9 p.m. kids have to be out of the pub kind of rules and pubs can make their own rules for that. So if you want to go and eat dinner at a pub or something like that with your family make sure you're doing it earlier in the day instead of later at night. And so that might mean the kids might meet some, miss some of the, the music because I've seen a lot of the bars and pubs when, or the pubs I should say when they have their live music it starts about 10 o'clock at night some start at 7 30 or 8 but most have them at 10 so just have a heads up for that okay yeah that's a really good point too guys like the, the pubs here start playing music sometimes around six seven o'clock too so you might get away with it but okay now another don't I have for you is don't skip out on the local brews yes <laughs> this is the home of Guinness and the home of well, this I mean you couldn't get more stereotypical than this guys but yeah guinness is savage i've never actually drunk a single drop of guinness guys i must be the only irish man to never drink a guinness my whole life living in ireland it's unbelievable i prefer cider i'm from the countryside guys i love cider apples is healthy as well you know i love my fitness guys so i prefer cider if you guys come here get rock shore cider rock shore cider or i believe there's another one called blood orange rock shore, uh, rock rock shore blood orange cider oh my it tastes like fanta but it gets you it gets you drunk as hell i love it guys so you can get a buzz while drinking fanta i absolutely love it guys fanta is like my favorite drink you know orange drink but yeah obviously you know if you drink cider guys you gotta come to Ireland. cider is like the be we do the best cider here guys orchard thieves bulmers is terrible i can't drink bulmers at all it's horrendous but Orchard Thieves is phenomenal. Smithics and Murphy's and there's so many great beers you can have here and of course whiskeys and so you should try them and I will say with the beers like Guinness and Smithics and Murphy's drinking it here in Ireland it's like you're drinking a completely different beer because it's so fresh it's so good it's so tasty you really will fall in love with Irish beers and stouts and reds and ales. Well, that's for sure you'll become an alcoholic here boys that's for sure oh yeah <laughs> that's for sure you will become an alcoholic I I love it guys i love it but in all seriousness guys you know what i mean take it easy in the drinking you know especially if you're an alcoholic guys you know what i mean you can't drink too much you know but if you come to ireland there are no alcoholics here guys you know what i mean it's just people that love a pint you know we have a phrase you're just fond of a pint guys and that's kind of true you know what i mean just don't go overboard with it just have a few guys why does everything have to be so extreme all the time because they are really good here because the thing is is when beer 
you know, if it goes to the U.S., it takes time, it, all these kind of things. So you're not getting it as fresh. Whereas here, it's like because it's like it's coming from the beer keg, you know, just right, right from the tap. Oh, it's like I mean, it's just amazing when you come here. So don't skip out on local ales. But I will say is. Don't forget your limit when you're drinking here. Look, those Guinnesses and Stouts and Reds, they're pretty strong beers and they taste pretty good. So if you're knocking them back, it's very quick. You'll see a lot of tourists don't know their limit and they have a bit too much. And you'll and no offense to Americans, but you know, as I've been going out every single day, well, every single day, every single month, we'll say at least, you know, for the last 10 years of my life, I feel like foreigners just can not drink alcohol. Now everyone to the East, like Russia and you know, Czech Republic, Poland, they can drink a lot of alcohol and not get just crazy. But anyone to the you know to the West, America, Canada, as soon as they start drinking a beer, they start getting rowdy, psycho. So Americans take it easy on the beer, okay? Have one or two, all right? Leave the beer drinking to us Europeans, guys. You'll see that a lot here in Dublin at the Temple Bar area. Man, don't go there late night if you're not ready for some <coughs> really drunk people, okay? But do be smart with your drinking when you are here. Don't forget your limit. And of course, don't drive drunk when you are here. It's a zero tolerance policy. You will get arrested. They do not care if you're a tourist or things like that. And if you think about it, you're driving on the other side of the road after you've been drinking, just not a good idea. Now, going back to- We have a Keys bar in Galway as well. I've actually been to the Keys in Dublin. Nice place. The pub, I will say something is, if you do buy pints at the pub and stuff like that, you do not have to tip here in Ireland. Yeah, and actually, here's, here's one big thing. This guy makes a great point, guys. We don't tip here in Ireland, especially in Europe. You know, I went to Italy, uh, let's just say Eastern Europe as well, guys. I went to Eastern Europe, that's where half my family live. Dude, when you, I go to tip them a euro, they like throw it back at me. They think it's some sort of like charity. They think it's some sort of, and they don't get paid. They get paid like 400 euro a month in uh, Czech Republic. You know, it's unbelievable. So like, don't give people free money, guys. People don't like that. It's kind of like, you know, tipping in Ireland is not, people don't tip here, guys. It's kind of weird as well when you do that. You know, my girlfriend's Canadian. She keeps tipping everyone. I'm like, stop tipping people. All right, relax. Even though, you know, in America and Canada, it would be seen as, you're seen as cheap if you don't tip. Which I get it too, guys. You know, you have to be kind of a bit more political about it, but you don't have to tip, guys. Ireland at the pub, so that's kind of a nice thing. You just go and, and you pay for your beer and walk away. You can leave some coins if you want, but you don't have to. And if you're paying a, a bar bill with a credit card, there's nowhere to write a tip anyway. So don't worry about the tippings at the pub. I mean, you can give some, but don't feel like you have to. All right. Now. Not having a tip at the pub and a really good beer and your kids can't go there at night, some people may think, oh, well, I'll just have a drink here in the park. Well, another don't I have for you in here in Ireland is don't drink in public. Look, <laughs> if you drink in public, you can be fined here, so. That's another good point, guys. Now, I'll say this. You know, if you drink in the public and go away, now I'm not advocating for breaking the law, guys, but you can have a couple of drinks, okay, outside. It's not gonna be too bad, but like he said, you know, they can find you. So don't break the law, guys. You know, in Galway, we have like certain laws where you're not allowed to drink outside. Me and my friends have argued this for years and years and years, you know, saying my friends say you can drink outside. They've never, nothing has ever happened. But if the police, the guardie, if they see you, they will give you a fine, guys. So just hide your drink and they won't do anything. But you know, don't break the law either, guys. It's not good. Heads up with that one. So if you want to buy your own drinks, make sure you have a place to drink it inside, not in a park or an outdoor space, because otherwise you can get a pretty hefty fine. Now, heading back to kind of the people kind of thing when you are here, don't forget to remember your manners here in Ireland. You will hear please and thank you and sorry, 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 so many times here in Ireland because the people are pretty polite when you talk to them. And so don't forget your P's and Q's. You know, when you're driving by, you, you pass people, you wave and stuff like that. But do make sure you remember your manners, which is funny because my next don't for you is don't come here with sensitive ears. Look, the Irish love to cuss and it doesn't matter if you're a little kid cuss. <laughs> or an old grandma you will hear cuss words you might not have heard before or you have you know guys I would swear I swear a lot well I don't swear that much but I would swear a lot more on this channel if YouTube didn't flag it so I don't swear on my YouTube whatsoever never ever I used to swear in the beginning and every video would get like limited ads so we're not swearing anymore but yeah absolutely we absolutely love to swear in our guys I'm not a big swearer but a lot of my friends <laughs> absolutely love to swear. It's kind of good crack. It's good crack when you're drinking, swearing. You feel like you're, you know what I mean? You feel like you're a real hard bastard. You know what I mean? <laughs> I've heard before, but never used in so many times in one sentence. That does happen here a lot. So don't be prudish about it. Just realize that it seems like a lot of the Irish do have a sailor's mouth. And you will be surprised how much 
you do hear cussing when you are here. So don't be upset by it. So my next don't for you is, don't try to see all of Ireland in one go. Yes, it's kind of a small island. When you look at it, oh, I can see all of that. Like look I said, guys, two weeks, more than enough, or four weeks if you want a full in-depth trip. I have done tons of tours, and about two weeks is all you need to see Ireland. There's too many things to see in Ireland to go and do it all because then you end up spending very little time and you're just driving from spot to spot to spot. Take the time, spend a few. Maybe that's, is that Trinity College or is that Maynooth? Two nights in each location to really go and see a lot of things because if you just spend one night somewhere, you're only going to see one thing and go. So, what I recommend is go. That looks like Galway. And, and pick like a region, okay? On this trip, we did kind of more of the mid south. So, we did, you know, we came to Dublin, then went to Kilkenny, and then we went down to Cork and Kinsale and Blarney, and then went to Waterford. And we kind of did this triangle like that. Maybe you want to do the west. I mean, for me, the west of Ireland is, is the most beautiful part. Going to hey, my guy. Galway and the Barrens. And yeah, and baby, come to Galway anytime, Walter. Hook me up, bro. We'll do a video together. Bro, Galway is the best, man, part of Ireland. And I'm not just saying that. It just is, guys. I've been, to, I've just got back from Dublin today. Galway is the, the west coast is the best. Donegal, oh, beautiful. There's some more and things like that. Beautiful. And what you really should do is, I'm, I'm honest, is pick a region and really focus on that because there's tons of castle ruins and medieval ruins and stuff like that and, and, and Neolithic ruins. I mean, there's stuff here that's older than the pyramids here in Ireland that you can go see that man-made. I mean, it's really, really cool. You know, and, and you can see those things. So do go and don't try to do it all. Select different areas and come back because my next don't for you is don't pay too much to get here. That's one of the best things about coming to Ireland is it's really cheap. Whether you're flying from mainland Europe or the US, getting to Ireland is significantly cheaper year round than anywhere else in Europe. I mean, we're here and it was literally, I mean, it was half the price of flying to Paris. And so look for those deals to come here because then you can use that money to go a lot farther and that's really kind of cool. Oh, yeah. Another thing that some people sometimes get worried about is that, what about the safety in Ireland? Am I gonna be safe there? Yes, you'll be safe in Ireland. The troubles and things like that, that's not really an issue really going on anymore. Hey guys, Ireland's like the safest country in the world. Apart from like Japan, it's like the safest, safest country in the world. Now, the last few months has been very dangerous in the last year, but not for tourists really. I don't think any like tourists will, there's been like one incident of one American tourist got beaten up, but like bro, you know, that's the same anywhere guys, you know what I mean? Okay, so you don't have to worry about the 1970s and 60s and 80s kind of stuff. That doesn't go on. The biggest worry you're going to have is when you're driving on the left side of the road that you're going to hit somebody or hit or lose the, the mirror on the side of your rental car. I do suggest getting the full super collision insurance thing, by the way. All right, so it is pretty safe here. Uh, the only things I really felt kind of uncomfortable about was too many people drinking in Temple Bar, which is normal because it's a bar area, okay? So other than that... Yeah, but the thing about Irish drinking is no one's really gonna like, you might get into a scrap with someone, but no one's gonna like really try and like attack you and kill you. You know what I mean? You might throw a few punches. Who hasn't been in the bar fight, guys? I mean, everyone in their whole life, who hasn't been in a bar fight in their life? Anyway, every single man <laughs> over the age of 25 has been in a bar fight, guys, of course. So, you know, it's the same as any other area, guys. And it's not, you're not gonna be fighting, you know, that much that don't worry you'll be okay when you come here but of course do pay attention do watch out for things because you know you're gonna be a tourist anyway and no place is perfect but hey it's not too bad here now another don't I have for you is don't call the Irish English or British that is the oh. one thing that I've seen will upset an Irishman because like hey we separated from them we are not part of that we are Ireland we're the Republic of Ireland so do not call them that. I will say another thing that kind of goes along with that is remember, don't forget your euros and pounds if you're gonna be coming here and visiting the entire island. Because Northern Ireland, they use pounds. So if you're gonna to go to Belfast or go see the Giant's Causeway, which is one of the coolest, you know, now. Jesus, I wouldn't suggest going to Belfast anyway, guys. The North of Ireland is kind of S-H-I-T-E. It's not great, but anyway, like, yeah, guys, do not call Irish people English, that's scandalous, and also, I'll add this, you know, <laughs> never call a Canadian person American. I can kind of distinguish between the accents now. <clears throat> Don't ever call it a Canadian American. They do not like that. Natural sights I've ever seen in the world, you're gonna need your pounds up there. But then the rest of Ireland, the Republic, you use the Euro when you are here. And what's cool is there's plenty of ATMs so you can get cash out, no big deal. And my last don't for you here in Ireland is don't skip a chance to see a Gaelic sports match. And the thing is it could be hurling, which is like kind of like hockey and it's like field hockey and normal hockey and 
and UFC mixed together where they had this ball. <laughs> you say UFC, bro, come on. They're batting up and whacking it and things like that. I mean, it's this crazy sport to watch. But for me, the, the <laughs> coolest one was watching Gaelic football or Irish football. I mean, it, it's basically take basketball, soccer, rugby, and UFC, mix it together. And that is what Gaelic football is. We got to watch the the All Ireland final, and it was like, oh my, dude, this sport is so awesome. And the thing is, the people have so much pretty violent for sure, yeah, pretty violent. Pride in their country and their sports that you have the Gaelic Athletic Association, all these kind of things, and you have some of the best tour guides in the world here in Ireland because the people, it's not just a job, it's a passion for their country and their culture, and that's why it makes so fantastic. So I hope this video helps you get prepared and excited to come to Ireland. It's a fantastic country with fantastic people and sights. And please do go because it is well worth it. Anyway, if you want to learn more about visiting Ireland, maybe the things that will shock you when you come here or things you should know before you come, check us out on our website at WaltersWorld.com. All right, guys, go check his website out. Also, go subscribe to his channel. He has a million subscribers. Guys, I am subscribed. I don't know how I wasn't subscribed. YouTube unsubscribes me all the time, guys, so do not take that as personal, Walter. But, guys... I'll say this, you know, this guy gave one of the best breakdowns of the do's and don'ts in Ireland I've ever seen. This is unbelievable, guys. <laughs> That's unbelievable. I love it. So let me know what you guys think. I added a few in there myself uh, to kind of correct him a little bit, you know, as I live here and I am a tour guide and I am a tour guide here. So guys, let me know what you all think. I love you guys all. I'll see you guys. Hopefully DM me if you guys want to go on a tour. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.